I hope, indeed I pray, that we shall not be found unworthy of our victory if after toil and tribulation it is granted to us. For the rest, we have to gain the victory. That is our task. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty. And so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. We shall not fail or falter. We shall not weaken or tire. Neither the sudden shock of battle nor the long-drawn trials of vigilance and exertion will wear us down. Give us the tools and we will finish the job. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Thanks for joining me. My name is Dave Miller. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy. I want to start out by thanking Juanita, a good friend from the old days I used to spend in the Tammy Bruce chat room, who told me some time back that she's been listening to me since the beginning. I want to say that it means a lot that friends I've made along the way are listening to this program. I'm continuing with my series ID23, and many of you Americans may be asking why. Isn't everyone getting a little bit tired of Brexit now? Hasn't that been played out? And haven't we heard all the news we need to hear about what's going on in another country? Well, I don't know. You tell me. I'm recording this the day after our 4th of July celebrations. Immediately after the United States of America celebrates its independence, we find out that a corrupt political class has just cleared Hillary Clinton of the possibility of any criminal charges surrounding activities involving her email server, which, according to even the most casual observer, were clearly criminal. Before that, we saw the governor of California sign six new gun control laws, none of which would have prevented any of the terrorist attacks that have occurred in his state, but all of which infringe on the people's right to keep and bear arms. And before that, the governor of Hawaii put the name of all gun owners in his state on an FBI database. The same FBI that just cleared Hillary Clinton of any criminal charges. Corruption among our political class is now running hand in hand with open attempts to disarm the American people by slow degrees. People, I'm going to finish this series composed of excerpts from the June 24th episode of the English Defense League radio program, hosted by Jeff Mitchell and paneled by Jan Rennie and myself. Because you need, as Americans, to understand that you can put an end to it. So sit back, relax, and listen to about 20 minutes of the joy that declared freedom can bring. We have Sue from New Mexico online. Hello, Sue. Oh, wow. Hello, Sue. <laughs> wow. Let's Hello, Sue. Good so evening, Sue, and welcome to the oh. show. My goodness me, Sue. Is this a historic event that's happened today? I mean, I just can't believe it. I'm still pinching myself. Oh, I'm still on one of the greatest highs ever, and I just had to celebrate this with, you know, the EDL. Such great things are going to happen now. And, you know, the one thing that I noticed, 72% went out and voted. I saw that, too. Wow. Who goes to the U.K.? This was the people speaking out, and it was one of the most incredible things that I ever saw. And I just can't be happier for you. Rough days, yeah, if you are going to come. Thank you. But in the end, you have done this for your children and your children's children. And uh, it's just wonderful. I just had to tell you how excited mm-hmm. I am for you. Thank you. So, Thank you, sir. Uh, as I say, we, we are all very well because... I didn't listen to no debates. As I said, I didn't listen to no debates. I know what the right thing for this country was. That is why every show we had. So I was saying to people, look, 
whatever you do, if you don't have a vote again, make sure when you vote that this you vote to get out because this is the most important vote you'll ever have. And it seems maybe a lot of people did listen. It feels that way. And I'm over the moon. I know Jan. Jan's been partying the last couple of days. I don't think she slept so through. <laughs> but no. you know just, what? I've got to thank you for calling in it. It's an historic day for, for us all, <laughs> I think, Sue, so, you know. It's, it's historic just one for of those the world, guys. Yeah. It's, it's historical, isn't it? The day is historic. That's why we, we uh, called it Independence Day, because the future is going to be bright. It's going to be bright for our future children and our yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. And that's why I look at it. Yeah, but it's going to fluctuate a little bit. It's going to take a little time for things to settle down. But we will do. We've done it before. We know how to pull together as a nation. We've got lots and lots of friends across the world who's willing to trade with us, haven't we, uh, Sue? So the future looks very bright indeed. And um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still bouncing around, I am. Yes, so, if I can interrupt you, you here, Jeff and in, Sue. As usual. So, uh, I've spoke to you for a little while, and thank you so much. Right, Germany, <laughs> USA and Canada all say they want special trade deals with post-Brexit Britain. That's the Germany one I wanted. Germany has joined there the United go. States and Canada in reaching out to Britain to stress the importance of trade deals with the UK outside of the European Union. This is a good post. We've not had many good posts today, but this is one of them. It comes despite constant scaremongering from the Remain campaign in the run-up to the referendum. The UK would face a tough foreign deal. We've quitted the bloc. President Barack Obama today said the UK and EU will remain indispensable partners of the United States following the Brexit vote. What a turncoat. What an asshole that man is. God, what a t- uh, the US God, leader, God. the US Muslim in chief, added that the special relationship between Britain and Washington will continue into the future. Oh, really, Mr. Obama? You are about to leave office too, and we're going to get Mr. Trump. That's who we're going to deal with. We don't deal with Muslims. <laughs> It marks the backtrack of the president, <laughs> who previously warned the UK would be at the back of the queue. Oh, really? He said we would be at the back of the queue. Well, he's thrown Cameron to the wind, and now he's agreeing with all of us. What a turncoat. Well, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's like back Cameron, was a liar. He says one thing, and then yes. he, he talks out the other side of his mouth. <laughs> He'll say anything to make him popular. Oh, yes. Yeah, Should he's a politician, and a he's a statement. Muslim politician, and, and uh, that's, he, I mean, basically, <laughs> he didn't come over it. It wasn't to try to change people's minds, Jan. In the end, it he just made us more, more resolute to get out because of him coming over. Blame him. Yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. The shirt-lifting I mean, president, the shirt-lifting, ass-kissing president of anything that's got a willy, the people of the United Kingdom have spoken, he said, and we respect their decision. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I'm sure the he does. The special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom is enduring. Yes, it is. I'll agree with that. What we don't agree with is you, you Muslim-faced bastard, trying to dictate to us to stay in because you and Cameron have had this thing going, you know, for a few years. It's all ended. Your boyfriend's gone. You are gone. Come November, <laughs> you're gone. And there you go. Back to you, Jeff and Dave. And Sue, thank, thank you for well, no, I, well, you know what, you you know know what guys? You know, that's what I like just... about Jay and Dave. It uh, sells it the way it is. And uh, spot on, as usual, Jay. Uh, as I say, any of you guys, if you want to call in and uh, maybe to congratulate uh, the country in doing the right thing, please do. There is a number out there to call in, which is 001858. If you're actually on USA, that is eight five eight seven 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 five nine three four. So come and join us and celebrate with us the most historical. I don't think, Jed, I don't know about you or, or Dave, but this is the most important day. I, oh, I think yeah. I, I, you know I've had to vote, and I was so looking forward. <laughs> and I went up with my next door neighbours, and you know we we, we was all sort of uh, <laughs> raring to go, you know, and. Uh, and I felt so good when I walked out of there, and I thought that. Oh, because you know yeah. what I've done as well, Jan? I, and uh, I'm going to tell our listeners what I did. I took <laughs> a pen with me. I weren't going to let people rub out my cross. I hope that. it was black. There so you I go, Jeff. Yes. Uh, and I hope a lot of you people did the same. My dear friends <laughs> and patriots and, <laughs> and everybody out there. I hope you did the Mine same because so thick we didn't scrum. want no skullduggery. We wanted our cross to mean something, didn't we, Jan? This time, really. Yep. 
I just want to answer uh, Jenna here on uh, in the chat room. Yes, the pound did drop, but it stabilised at four percent, and hopefully by morning it will start climbing. Uh, the It'll Bank of right England uh, yeah. president has said he will prop up the pound. No panic. You know, we expected a bigger drop, but no. The Dow Index and all that shite that they talk about, the pound is going to be fine. It's it's that, that's all it is, Jad. What we saw, this was a shock across the stock markets. And because the day, it was all, especially the capitalists and all that, they were expecting mm. the remain. They thought business as usual. Ah, uh, no, it's not because the people, <laughs> the people spoke. Mm. So, yeah, that's the reason why they was in a bit of a spin. <coughs> but, you know, it's like anything. They had to sit down and think about it. OK, we could still do trade with her. Uh, uh, yeah, things can, can carry on. So, oh, it's, it's all tonight? common sense. In the end... You know what that reminded me of, guys? You know what that sorry, reminded Dave. me of? Sorry, sorry, mate. It, the reaction of the markets and everything, it, it reminded me of a cat that's been startled. You, you get a cat... It's sitting there quietly in the living room, and something startles it, and, and it jumps up and runs and hides somewhere. And, and then a few minutes later, you know, it sticks its head out, and then it goes back to where it was in the living room. And, and that's exactly the way this was. The U.K. is going to be fine. The pound is going to be fine. The markets are going to be fine. Everything is going to readjust. This is the beauty of free market. All of this is going to be good. Yes, there will be, as Jeff says, a few wobbles here and there, but it always happens yeah. that way. You can't have a new birth without pain. But you know what? Everybody's realizing that has a, two brain cells thrown together that it's all going to settle down and only good can come from this. The only people that are upset by this are the lefties and the, the Muslims and, the and, 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 the, and the one-worlders and the globalists and people like that. And to them I say it, you're a certain amount of money gets wiped. But it always does. There might be a fluctuation in oil and you find that uh, the stock markets go crazy, don't they? And it's the same thing. There's been a bit of a shock to the globalists out there, but business is normal. The world continues. The world will still turn, and we will still trade with other people. And um, mm -hmm. we're going to right the wrongs of what's been going on in this country for 43 years. Things are going to be better for everybody concerned. And we do mean well, you know even what, our Jeff? financial friends across the board. Wherever you might be, things will be cool now. Okay. I saw a yeah. post today, and I'm not, I didn't repost it because I'm, I've never, ever been into the New World Order crap. I'm not into that kind of thing. But there was a, yeah. there was a post today that says, the UK has stopped the New World Order. And I smiled to myself and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> we've done that too, have we? <laughs> a lot of people tended to look towards the New World Order. Well, in the end, it comes down to people doing the right thing for their yeah. country and the nation. I know my lads did. I know exactly the way my youngest one felt. I know the way my eldest one felt. We all, I don't think I talked to anybody that disagreed with what I had to say, or, or yourself, Jan. How many people mm -hmm. did you talk that in disagreement with what you had to say about staying or going? Because I didn't come across anybody. Everybody I talked to, even, you know, like, I'll get your cab back over or something. Uh, and I'm talking to a cab driver. And he was a foreign guy. He's he Polish. He was saying, yeah, they'd be better off getting out, like, you know, and, and I can't, I can't wait, you know. Uh, and, and that's <laughs> it. This is the way it was. The people I talked to in my circle, you know, uh, uh, friends and uh, people that are my associates, and probably the same as yourself, Jan. Well, we had a message on CDL and from various sources, like one of them is uh, the Polish uh, Defence League and it's also Christian Defence League. Polish division, which is theirs, it's, it's not ours, it, it is theirs, they're affiliated to us, and the Polish are over the moon. Absolutely wow. extraordinary <laughs> messages. And earlier this morning they were trying to say, oh, like them pair of pillocks in Peterborough, I don't know who they are, fishmongers or something from wherever they were. Uh, I don't know where they were from. They were foreigners anyway, but they weren't Muslims. Uh, we don't know what we're going to... Are we going to get kicked out of the country? What a load of bullshit. Nothing extraordinary is going to happen. The only thing is, we're an independent country again, free to trade with whoever we want, and not 
sending £55 million a day to the faceless bureaucrat wonders that we hardly see anything out of it, what I was talking to Dave about earlier. We can keep our money in our country. We can shore up our shores and stop all this, these problems that we've been having with our own resources. We can do that and put the money where it's so gratefully needed, like the National Health Service, you know, our, our armed forces. That's something that needs to be done. Cameron cutting our armed forces. When we was at war, that had to be the worst thing a Prime Minister could do at wartime. Wasn't it, Jan? I've never known a Prime Minister in all the times, over the centuries, that has ever done anything like that. David that Cameron asshole, along with Obama, exception. wanted to send our boys and girls into Syria to bump off Assad and his loyalist army. Just like they did with the other ones, the, you know, the, the, the rest of the leaders, right? They were, they were tyrants, they were horrible people, but they kept the Middle East in order. We did not have this problem while they were still alive. I'm talking about Gaddafi and, and the other ones. Yep. We had stabilisation. You mean Hussein? Let's not huh? forget Cameron and Obama went to Parliament and to the Senate to try and get a war against Assad. Assad was not our enemy. He's secular. He runs a great country. If we'd have gone against Assad, that would have meant we were on the side of ISIS. Am I wrong? Am I right? I know I'm right. We need Assad. We need to keep him safe. We need Syria to go back to how they were, where they were good to the Christians, they were good to the Muslims, they were good to the Jews. There was never a problem in Syria until Clinton and Ass Shagger went into the Middle East and disrupted (laughs) the whole lot. Well, you, you, you're talking, you're talking good, David. You know, good, uh, Dave. Love it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I, I do love the way that Jen tells it the way it is, and that is why we. we, we well, that's another. Chuckle. That's another reason. That's so the thing good, that a lot Jane. of people over here have a problem with is his our soldiers are being used. Dead. Yeah, our Obama's soldiers are being got used. Six boyfriends all dead. Our he soldiers. Had a and one of them come and arrest me. It's the Our truth. soldiers. Jen, our soldiers are being used as mercenaries for the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes, and, exactly. and you guys Thank refuse you to let that happen. And that sort of thing needs to stop. And that's why I'm so glad that Obama will be leaving the White House. We need to get a president in that's going to realize that our soldiers are good people who prosecute war when it needs to be prosecuted, not when the Muslim Brotherhood says they need some more territory. Muslims don't call the tune with us. They've tried to. They've been succeeding because of our weak lefty government. Muslim dictation stops. It stops here in the UK, and in November it stops in the US. It stops. And when it stops in the US and stops in the UK and the rest of Europe, they can piss off back to the Middle East where they belong. Sad exactly. Shaggers. They can go exactly. away. Take exactly. the Syrian with them. You know, you know what, Jan and Jeff? I've got one thing to say, Jan and Jeff. Jan, you were talking about how they were, they were interviewing Muslims, and, and they were talking about how things should be done. You know what? To them, I would say, the Muslims in the UK, I, I, I would say, listen, if you don't like the fact that the UK is going to be independent of Europe, there's still no travel restrictions. You can still travel within Europe. So uh, do travel back into Europe from the UK. The UK can do without you. <laughs> back to you guys. Exactly. Yeah, I, want my black, I want now. my black passport <clears throat> back. I don't want this red European crap shit on my passport. I am not European, never have been, never will be. I want my black passport back, and I want it back in two years' time when this is the period's all over. I want my passport well, back. But this will happen, not though, Jan. Yeah, this will result back to the old-style passport, because, as you, as you say, we are no longer a part of this EU big boys club, and we want our independent passport back. We want to be who we was before. We don't want to be a part of this little team of theirs because it's going to fall away. There's other countries at all. Even France uh, has even mentioned that because we're stepping away of the EU and Finland. Uh, and there's other countries, isn't there, Dave? There's, I think, about seven or eight different countries. I do believe that we will start <laughs> oh. a domino effect. So I think no, in a year or so, yeah, Jack, just the EU me. will cease to function. I think it will give up the ghost, and I think most of the countries will walk away from it and become independent again, and uh, for the better oh, of the cool. world as well. Maybe you know what I'm right, back of political correctness and all this crap as well, Jack. Maybe this is the start of, as you say, uh, to see maybe Donald Trump become president, the brother commander-in-chief 
and running the things the way that things should be run. And uh, with us, will we be getting a new Prime Minister? Whether it's Boris or wherever it might be, we shall see. Uh, only time. But just to get rid of the moron Cameron, that's made my day anyway. Sort of my thing was to see the back of him, to see him go with his tail between his legs to the Queen and say, I'm a failure, Your Majesty. I'm going to resign. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have been that fly on the wall with you, Jan. Well, you know what, guys? You, young man. <laughs> I I had a post earlier this morning, and uh, let me see if I can find it. It was written in Dutch, and you know me, I, I've got to get it translated and all that. Carry on. Let me see if I can find it. Well, well Jan, while bit. you're finding that, I'll just make a quick prediction. A few of them. Watch for the EU to admit Turkey now in a trice. That's going to happen, but that's not going to save them because so many countries are already now thinking of exiting. The Scandinavian countries are thinking about getting out. The EU is done. Economically, they were already done. But this, I think, is going to signal a breakup. If even France is ready to leave the EU, then you know that the thing is rotten to the core and it's ripe for the breaking down. Okay, I've just got a message from Lutz Walter who's, uh, I'm going to say a big shot because I can't think of what else I could say, but he's in the uh, Pegida German branch, and he has said, congratulations for your Independence Day. Millions of German people are by your side. Greetings from oh. Dresden. What a day of joy. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lutz Walter that from Pegida. That is amazing. That is, um, no, it's good. It Don't just lifts your spirits, and, and to think that this has been a long, hard fight, hasn't it, Jan? Uh, oh, it's been we've a long, got so many fight. people on our side. But you know what? Yeah, um, it's just good to see that we've got so many people congratulating us about independence. This is, let's just say, it's an amazing historical time, which I don't think I'll ever, ever forget today. Today, as you say, ladies and gentlemen, it is Independence Day, and this has got to be turned into a bank holiday, hasn't it, Jan? We're going to keep oh, you know, going to push for this. Yeah, no. we've got to have... You know what? We had a post today, another one from an American, saying, we've got July the 4th, Britain has got June the 23rd. So, yep, there you go. Exactly. Instead of ID 4, you guys have ID 23. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and no alien. And it's the, week of, uh, it's the week of Jeff's birthday. Yeah. yeah well, it, it's so just it's, after Jeff's I'll, I'll ask you it's just after night Jeff's birthday. Day. I said that my week will be complete. I had a great birthday. I had so many people sending me up. Just going to thank everybody. There was a birthday today. Mm-hmm. Someone's got a birthday day, of course. Uh, and that is, oh, Dave, whose birthday that is, is our, Teresa? That Teresa's is our Teresa. Teresa's birthday today. Oh, Teresa, and if you listen yeah, to Teresa, yeah. We, happy birthday, we all wish you a very happy birthday, happy Teresa. Birthday. And, uh, yeah, what a, a what a day! What a day to have a birthday. She, mm-hmm. she said in, in a post that she woke up to find the results of the vote, and she said, "Just what a wonderful birthday present it is! What a wonderful day to have a birthday, the new birth of freedom in the United Kingdom and, and for the world." Because I, I got to tell you guys, I don't even think really you guys, well, you two do, you Jeff and Jan do, but, but I, I really don't think the people in the UK fully understand the hopefulness that this brings to freedom-loving people around the world as we watch globalism trying to take away every every nation's sovereignty. Right. You know, to have you guys leave the EU pushes a new breath of hope in for freedom-loving people everywhere. As I said earlier, my heart hasn't been swelled this much with pride since the fall of the Berlin Wall. The series ID23 will continue with Part 3. People, though it may seem like it, Tyranny is never 100% inevitable. My fellow Americans, it's up to you. You can lie down and take it, or, as the people of the United Kingdom have done, this generation of Americans can declare its own independence. That's it for this time. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 
2016. Anno Domini.